this street part changed my skating forever. The street part I'm talking about is from the full length video from Primitive's Paint is Beauty. Now this was when Primitive wasn't a skateboard company, it was just apparel. I think they were kind of transitioning to a skateboard company at the time, but I was on the apparel side, which I've told y'all this before. And I was fortunate enough to <laughs> get a street part in their first full length video. Now, how did this street part change my skating forever? Now to answer that question, we need to speak about three things. And that's one, how was my skating before the street part? Two, what was the process like filming the street part? And three, the main question of them all, the reason why you clicked this video, how did this change my skating forever? Also, after all that, I'm gonna be showing some clips that didn't make the cut for the street part. So make sure you guys watch the whole video because at the end of this video, it's gonna be a little montage of me showing those clips. But before we get the video started, let's refresh our memory on the street part I'm talking about. The way the other side ain't eating, you would think they fasting Don't care how bad she is, that vape pen make a bitch look trashy All that designer that he buying, he still looking tacky She did a hair, but once I'm done with that, it's back to nappy All my bitches drive me round, I don't need no taxi We got vehicles, little baby, we don't do no lapping I got money make, little baby, I don't do no napping oh. We in ain't castaways today, Brussels with the steak Always chill, baby, but how chill are you today? I'm chill like elevator music, baby. How was my skating before the street park? I would skate a whole lot and I would film every single thing, which you know, would seem like an amazing thing, right? But with all that consistency with skating and stacking clips, I just wouldn't care about how the tricks look. Meaning I didn't care a lot of the times if I landed the trick clean, popped clean, always even going fast enough, and et cetera, more things with that. At the time, I just thought, go out, get clips, and that's all that matters, as long as the tricks are like difficult. But, you know, difficult is a perspective. Not everybody's gonna think that's difficult just because you think it's difficult. So here's how my skating looked before the primitive street part. Notice how all of these clips have Tic Tacs and sloppiness to it. And now that I'm making this video, I'm just realizing that a lot of these clips were filmed at skate parks, which obviously all my clips weren't like this, but the fact that I had this many in videos that I was putting out, it's how you know I didn't give a damn, but that wasn't gonna slide. Now let's fast forward. Right when I got Red Flow for Primitive, which is the step before Flow, which you're not really even, I mean, Flow isn't really on the team, I guess. Well, it is, but Red Flow is like, you just, they're testing you out. They're just giving you some product, whatever, we'll see what happens. But uh, right when I got Red Flow for that, that's when I made my first street part with Nigel Alexander. And that's when he told me that all the stuff I was doing before that, the way I was thinking how street parts should be or whatever, needs to stop. Meaning he coached me to get a street part done that primitive or respect. So I consider that street part a warm up <laughs> to the street part I'm talking about now. In that part, he will make sure I landed everything clean with speed, no Tic Tacs. And if I needed to redo it, he will push me to redo it. He will motivate me. He will make sure I'll get it done. So when we dropped that part, it gave primitive the green to go ahead and actually flow me. And months went by and they they told me, hey, you gotta film a part for our first full length video, Pain is Beauty. What was the process like filming this street part? Well, first of all, this felt like one of them dramatic ass animes where they put 
them into like a situation where they're on some type of like special quest to save the world. That's how I really felt. So now all the things I knew, all the things I learned about how to make a legit street park ran through my mind, got me excited and my motivation went through the roof. And to make matters even crazier, they told me I'm sharing the park with skater Carlos Vega, which is an amazing, crazy skater. We always skated together in Nigel's video, so I knew how good he was. And it just made me more competitive. And I'm like, and I know he felt the same way too. It's all love and friendly, but we just wanted to do better than each other in the street park. Every day I was getting into it, making sure every trick was clean. We had about like four to six filmers like on call pretty much that primitive provided and there was really no excuse not to get clips now see i had tunnel vision filming this part most people think tunnel vision is a good thing and i always say it isn't i think inspiration is better than motivation or tunnel vision let me try to give you a brief explanation why i feel like i've told you guys this before but it's always good to remind y'all when you have tunnel vision you're looking at the end of the tunnel you're looking at the light at the end of that motherfucker and you're not focusing on anything else you're just trying to get to the end of that tunnel that's what tunnel vision is that's what motivation is right you don't give a fuck about what else is on the way over there in the process of any of that but when you have inspiration when you're inspired when you stay inspired you're going down that tunnel inspired and you're under you're not understanding you're aware and noticing things that could possibly help you throughout that process of getting to the end of the tunnel it could be a better result of something that's helping you on the way over there or it can help you get there faster but when you're motivated you're just straight thinking about the end of the tunnel you don't give a fuck and you might pass up opportunities i hope that makes sense so by me having that tunnel vision i ran past a lot <laughs> of opportunities that could have helped me complete that street part quicker or even better but instead i ran <sighs> Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah, I ran into a lot of conflicts. One example is I sprained my left ankle really bad trying to stack these clips going crazy. And I knew I would be out for a few weeks. That's how bad it was. But I decided to push through that and still skate on that and stack clips. And what ended up happening? I sprained my right ankle. Now I have two sprained ankles. So guess what I do? I still skate and try to stack clips. Now, I did stack clips with two sprained ankles. Which sounds, you know, like, damn, you pushing through it, you're going crazy. But none of those clips were used because they were weak as fuck. Besides that, my hunger for these clips were so strong. If the four to six filmers that we had, that they liked, you know, they're, you know, primitive like they're filming or whatever, those are the four to six filmers. If they were busy and I couldn't film with them because they might have been filming with somebody else or whatever the case is, I would get my homies to film on my camera. And that would never be used because they didn't like they filming, which I understand why, especially now that I'm older. By the time I was like, what? It's just a clip. You're still stuck in that mindset. But besides all the negative with the process of filming for the street part, there was a lot of positive. One of the positives was I started treating myself more like an athlete, which I think a lot, a lot of skaters need to start doing more because we are, if not crazier than athletes like basketball players and football players, we're, we're just as crazy like intense wise but anyways i started treating myself more like an athlete meaning like i would exercise more so it could help my skating i would uh take care of my body more so i do ice baths and whatever whatever i could figure out <clears throat> damn whatever i could figure out you know by youtubing or some pro skaters that i knew would give me some advice that were doing it like oh ice bath or do these stretches or use this etc i will also stop randomly trying tricks at spots i will start thinking about what i want to do plan it out and go to the skate park or whatever and train for it practice for it do it over and over i would even do things like how can i say this if there was a stair trick i wanted to do i would practice in a way where on flat ground i would do it i make sure i'm able to do that trick on lock going full speed or pretty fast because usually when you practice flat ground tricks you don't go that fast i'm gonna be honest not a lot of people do that but i don't know if nigel told me this or i've thought of this myself he probably did tell me that but you gotta do it going fast and learn them fast on flat because that will help with the stairs because when you skate stairs you're trying to clear that shit so you're usually going faster than how you would do it on flat if that makes sense i went as far as meditating and visualizing the tricks which i'm big on that but at the time, I was really going in on that, focusing on that, 
because it keeps you in a mindset of just winning. All of that leads to the final thing we're gonna talk about, and that's how did the street part change my life forever? It's a very easy and simple explanation, but it took me it, it took me a war to finally understand it. All of what I just explained made me realize, even though skateboarding is an art, a way of life, creativity, freedom, there is a sports side to it. And filming for the street part made me realize that. Now, a lot of you might hate and disagree with me when I say there's a sports side of skating, but there honestly is, and that's what keeps skating alive. Besides the big competitions like X Games and Street League, putting a light on skateboarding where people who don't skate watch it and have an interest in it, street parks kind of really do the same thing. Putting all that effort into making a small piece of content that could take months, even years to create is nothing like anything in this world. And the respect that you get from it is, is incredible. So my mindset used to be go out, stack as many clips and put out as many of those street parts or videos out as possible and after filming for the primitive paint is beauty street part it made me realize don't just half ass this shit just to stack clips you know that's cool nowadays for instagram and stuff like that but like really focus on creating something that could be a masterpiece where people will still talk about it years from now even when you're gone it's like thinking back on it it's like i still have people complimenting me on that part today even when i stopped skating for a little bit people would stop me in the street and still compliment that part. And that wouldn't be a thing if I didn't take it as serious as I did. I hope videos like this of me talking and, you know, I guess giving some advice or just giving my story, my POV of things, I hope it could really help some of the skaters that are watching this and give y'all some guidance or some perspective. Or even if you don't agree with some of the things I'm saying, it could just give you a little start on thinking about, I don't know, just thinking about something i hope it just sparked something you know what i mean so i'm glad you guys are watching these videos and yeah i I'm, I'm really enjoying these but like i said in the beginning i am going to show the clips that didn't make the part and i want you guys to enjoy that but while you guys are watching it please give it a like and comment below and comment something that you guys would like me to talk about or speak on and yeah take your time thinking about that that comment while you're watching the clips that didn't make it. One, one, one. I love y'all. See you guys in the next video.